Okay, we are seeking out first blooms of spring, even though it's still winter, but we are rushing it along, just like the groundhog. We want it to be spring now. And look what we found. These are the Professor Sargent Camellia Japonicas. Goodness, these are just butted up. Let's see. Look at these sweet things. This is the Greensboro Red. So this one can take sun or shade. They are so beautiful and vibrant. Ooh, it's like Easter egg hunting. Here's pink debutante. Oh my goodness. Isn't that stunning? And just look at the amount of bud action, meaning we are gonna be bloom central here before you know it. So we're expecting rain. It's been in the forecast and we are getting little sprinkles throughout the day, throughout the morning. And so right now we are going to head into the greenhouse. What's going on over here? Oh, I didn't even realize we were going. We solved the tables in half and we put them on the back of the dump truck because I'm putting a new one in and then we're just putting it up in here. We're going to make it look nice. Good work. Thank you. Hi, it's Ruthie and Reagan. We have a really big variety this year that we're so excited for you guys to see. So, our seed collection comes from Southern Exposure Seeds. They have the cute little catalogs. And they're a really awesome company that's pretty local to us in Virginia. So if you look here, all of the images that are on the seed packets from Southern Exposure Seed Exchange, these are hand drawn. And they are just beautiful. So, we love this company organic seeds non-gmo they are worker owned this will be our second year of offering their seeds in our retail uh as First year offering vegetables exactly and i think that's really what we're excited to share today are some of the varieties that we have already started as of last week we're getting ready to have an event in late april and we'll be having these starts for sale as well as providing a little lecture and a fun time on how to prepare for a vegetable garden. If you're new gardeners or someone maybe new to our growing zone or someone who just wants to try something a little different. So first off, we're gonna talk about some of the different herbs that we'll be offering this year. The cinnamon basil here. Uh, while neither of us has really started it from seed and grew it in our garden, we both are wanting to grow it this year. And we have the lemon basil which also she has grown i have she gave me a start and i loved it so i bought my own seeds of it <laughs> it's actually really beautiful in the garden because the color is not your traditional green for your basil it's much more limey yellowish green now we have another fun color the dark opal basil this one's a cutie pie i love its dark purple leaves it really gives a fun diversity in the garden so the thing that I really loved about this is pairing it, well, I paired it with the lemon lime last, last year and tomatoes. And I thought the color was obviously really unique. But what is really neat is it almost has an iridescent look, a shimmer on the leaves. So you get green, but a lot of different colors of purple. And you may or may not know, but the more that you pinch a basil plant, the more it, you're going to get. And so you can really bush them out and have them be a moment of just beauty and contrasting color in your veg garden. We just have your regular green sweet basil. It's sweet Genevieve. It's a good little garden staple. It's a really good one. Just if you are just wanting a basic green. I want to go back to this one really quickly though because I dried this in a dehydrator and then I cut some out of the garden and just tied it up and dried it in the house and it makes for the most beautiful dried herb. And then when you add it to some yellow or orange cherry tomatoes, just the color is so um, festive and inviting when you're cooking. So everyone should have this. We probably should have bought more seed packs. Yeah. I think this is gonna be the number one seller. 
Next we have dill. This is just the plain bouquet dill. This one's a good one for pickles. It's on. It's actually one of the most recommended for people that want to make pickles. So if you're a pickle lover, you need to pick up some of this. Really easy guy. I love dill pickles, so he definitely grows in my garden along with my cucumbers. So, <laughs> so for me, I do not grow dill in my vegetable garden. I grow it with all of my woody shrubs, perennials, and evergreens as decorative. But then we do eat it. But what I love that it adds to that part of my garden and landscape is this tall, wispy, see-through, textural element. The seed heads get so big after they've bloomed. Um, I leave them standing for all of the uh, birds and bugs and whatnot through the fall and winter. Beautiful scent, but really for me, it's just the movement of it within the landscape. You get a little light breeze. Um, the sun's going down and kind of twinkling through it. It just adds a lot. It's a really great filler, inexpensive, edible, but also can really add to a non-edible landscape. My regular Italian parsley. This guy's a little slow to germinate, so sometimes you may feel a little discouraged when starting it, but I promise it's going to come up. <laughs> cilantro, or it can also be called coriander. Um, this guy, I love cilantro. Like I said, I kind of see this as like a sister to parsley. They have very similar like growing habits, so they're super good little guys. Flavor. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 right. Alright, sorry, Rachel made a little visit, but like I was saying, we're talking about cilantro or coriander. Great guy, great staple for your garden, great to add to your dishes. Then we're offering two types of chives this year. Uh, garlic and your plain chives. We wanted to add a garlic chives just to add a little bit of diversity and just a little bit a different flavor. The thing that I love about chives is the flower head is so pretty. The garlic chives I'm really excited because if you can see on this seed pack there are these little buds here and those are right before the flower opens. It's really fun to cut chives at that point um, because you just get a little more uh, a little bit more of a kick of flavor. Kick of, kick of flavor. <laughs> We're gonna talk about our cucumbers. I'll be pickling cucumbers. This is just called homemade pickling. Super easy guy. A little bit of a smaller, more petite pickle, not super, not pickle, cucumber. <laughs> not super, super big, kind of like some of the ones you see in the store, but a little bit smaller. And it doesn't have quite as hard of a um, skin on them because uh, so that way those pickle, the pickling juice can really get in there and soak in. So. All right, and then the other two I picked out is a little bit more of like a slicing cucumber. So the Space Master is very similar to one that I grow called Straight Eight. And I'm also gonna have this one in my garden this year along with my Straight Eight, but that's kind of just a regular slicing cucumber. It has a little bit of a thinner skin on them. So the Poinsett 76. This guy is gonna be very similar to what you'll find in the grocery store, that really dark green cucumber with the thick skin on them. These last a little bit longer in your fridge or wherever you store your cucumber. All right, so next up, I'm gonna talk about some of the melons. First of all, we have just a regular cantaloupe. This one's the hell's best, which I have the most luck with. It's also called a musk melon, which I just found out as well. I never knew that, but these guys are really good. This one is kind of like a staple here in the South. This is what most people grow for their cantaloupe harvest. Um, this one's really good about being uh, heat tolerant, so that's why it's really popular in the South to grow. So then I picked out two watermelon cottons to grow as well. Um, Crimson Sweet is gonna be a bigger watermelon. That These guys love the heat, so they grow really well here in the South. So then the Sugar Baby is another one. Oh, love this one. So this one is my favorite as well. Um, these guys are so cute. They're little compact, kind of like a personal watermelon, so like what I would call them. They're so sweet and full of flavor. They're so great. The rind is so minuscule. It's, it's all flesh to eat. Yes. And this one's really cute too, because it's a very dark, dark green color. So it's a little bit different than your regular watermelon that has stripes. This guy's really just straight dark. I actually had one of these that I was almost going to harvest and then I accidentally broke it off the vine before it was completely done ripening. <laughs> so I didn't even get to eat it. <laughs> Alright, next I'm going to talk about our squashes. Um, I have a regular zucchini here. These guys are ridiculously prolific and don't leave them on the vine too long or you'll get ginormous zucchini that you can't do anything with because it's not good to eat, okay? 
<laughs> you might think, okay, I've done this too many times, okay? You have a zucchini, it's like, yay long, and you're like, oh, I just want to leave it for one more day just to get a little more size on it. I'm telling y'all, overnight, these suckers Wrong grow decision. twice yeah. as big. I've had so many do that. Or like, um, you go and you don't pick your garden for a few days. Better get ready for some jumbo zucchini, all right? Those things are ridiculous. <laughs> Less is more of a zucchini. And they're super prolific. You will get harvest all summer long as long as you keep those squash borer bugs out of there. Those guys are really common here in the south. Don't talk about that. We're only talking about positive things. I'm just today. saying. <laughs> definitely make sure you treat for that. But then we have the early prolific straight neck. This is what my dad grew for years at home before I started gardening. So this guy is definitely a well known favorite here in the south. Like it said, early prolific is a super fast mature. You normally can get uh, squash within less than six weeks most of the time. Love this type of squash so much. It's my favorite. Yay, squash! <laughs> okay, so next up we're going to talk about peppers. Um, I picked out a bunch of peppers for us. Uh, probably too many, <laughs> but it's okay. You're changing your name to Peter. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I picked out a couple sweet as well as a couple is so bad. Or who doesn't want a bunch of different peppers, okay? I have like 20 something varieties myself that I'm growing because I'm crazy, so. First off, I have a sweet chocolate bell. This guy is just like a regular California bell. It's just purple. It's sweeter too, I think. Than... It's high in anthocyanides. Whatever that is. Um, so it's really- purple, All purple fruit and vegetables the are high in an antioxidant called Anthocyanide. Okay, so it's an antioxidant. Okay. So next up, I just have our regular plain California Wonder. This one's tried and true here in the South. I've grown this one at home for many years. It's my favorite bell pepper. I really love that whenever, with most peppers, but I really love that whenever you let them uh, deeply heart or ripen on the um, plant, they'll turn that red color so you can still get your red peppers and you don't have to buy a specific red pepper plant to get red bell peppers. I also just want to say I am an extremely impatient person. I've never waited for any of my bell peppers to turn red. It's a problem. So yeah, this one's a really good one. We'll have plenty of these to share with you guys. So definitely come check us out because we'll have all of these available. And we're really excited to see you guys as well. All right, so last up for our sweet peppers, I just have regular sweet banana. Let me tell y'all something. These guys are ridiculously producing plants. God, I keep dropping them. <laughs> Alright, that's like the fifth time. It's good though. It's cute. So, those guys as well, if you leave them on the vine, they'll turn from that green banana, the greenish yellow that you would normally see, they'll turn to an orange and then to a red if you want that. Super good little snack to, uh, pepper. Um, I just got said tomato. <laughs> Super good little snack pepper. Um, really good for just about anything. You can also pickle those guys. That pickled pepper is so good. Yes! Pickled pepper is really good. So, and these guys, I, I love them to death because they, like I said, they're super good at, um, not good. They're they're really bountiful and plentiful in their harvest. So well, this this is the kind of plant out of all the seeds that we've talked about, besides cucumbers and zucchinis, it makes you feel like a really good gardener. Just first off. I had them two years ago, I think I had four plants, and I would go out there and probably pick at least 15 peppers a day off of each plant, so like 50 peppers a day is how much I would pick off of just four plants. They were so um, plentiful. Um, my dog likes to stand under them. Don't ask me about that, she's weird, okay? She's a Great Dane, so she's like at that perfect height that she would go out there and she'd just stand in them because it was in my small red raised bed behind my house. So now I'm going to go into our hot peppers. Now being interrupted by Master Gardener for our upcoming event. Please hold. All right. Hi, guys. We're back. It's been a week. We were interrupted for a really long time. Now we're back to finish up peppers, starting with Anaheim. I have a problem. <laughs> Neither have I, actually. First time this year. I just heard a lot of people talk about it. So that's why I got it. I'm growing it this year. Regular jalapeno. I've grown this one multiple times, multiple years. Great plant. Honestly, it doesn't get that tall. 
but they're big producers. Yeah. They, just, they make you feel, it's another one that makes you feel really good about gardening or first time successes because of the amount of fruit that it puts on. Habanero. Who doesn't love a spicy pepper? Spice up your life. Bright orange, exciting, very tiny. Toronto. This is another just hot pepper. Green, kind of looks like a jalapeno. But smaller, this yeah. is actually one of my favorites for flavor and heat. Now we can move on to the tomatoes. All right, so first off, I have Cherokee Purple. Um, I grew this one last year. I love the fruit so much. Not very acidic, so that's one good thing, especially if you have like some digestive issues and stuff. But this one's a really good knife. Big Rainbow. I haven't grown this one this year. It's in my, um, I had just started it for uh, this coming year. So I'm really excited about this one because I love all the colors on it. It kind of looks like a pineapple tomato, but it's a little bit bigger. It's going to grow fat, kind of veins and stuff. No experience without me doing that. <laughs> okay, then we have black cherry. Definitely. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I just want to take over. Have you grown this one? No. Well, here's what I want to say. My first year in North Carolina, I grew this. And inevitably, I did not pick off all of the fruits. So I've actually had them for three years in a row and I only grew them once from seed. So this is a, it's a giver. It produces so many tomatoes and the flavor is so good and it's different. So it just gives you, you know, a different flavor palette from a regular red cherry tomato. Which I think is next. Yep, that's nice. <laughs> Just a regular old red cherry. I, they produce so much. Uh, I love cherry tomatoes because I love just to pick them off the vine and eat them real fast. So that's one of my favorite things about them. All right, then I have long keeper tomato. Supposedly, it's supposed to keep like uh, through the winter and keep it in like a dark place and stuff. It's supposed to be really good to keep for storage. It says you can keep them for six to 12 weeks indoors. Mature. That is wild. I'm growing these this year too, so. Probably gonna need to start these <laughs> in my garden. <laughs> and then we just have regular old Roma tomato. Uh, this is a staple in most kitchens, you know, for uh, paste, tomato sauces, uh, Italian food. So that was a really good one. Um, very, very fleshy. So it's a good, um, not a lot of like juice and stuff really, especially flesh. You know? Yeah. It's actually really great. I have grown this for the last two years and I've actually committed a whole garden bed to this variety. And then next up we have German Johnson, which is just a normal red tomato. Um, it's the regular old slicing red tomato. I've just heard a lot of good things about this specific variety, so that's why I picked this one. Grown it every year. These, they are great producers and they make really big tomatoes. Then for our last, just regular red slicing tomato, we have just the plain brandy wine. It's not your normal dark red tomato. It kind of has a pink hue to it almost. So that's a really, it's a really pretty tomato growing through the garden. Um, and I love all the veins that's in it. Like it almost looks like you put rubber bands around and it grew around the rubber bands sometimes. So I love the oh, interesting, like, um, growing pattern it has. Mm. <laughs> you lit us up. <laughs> Come say hi. Do you have anything to say about the Brandywine tomato? Hi. Oh, the yeah. Brandywine's are really good. Yeah, we used to grow... Tell them. So we used to grow Brandywines. I'm from Michigan, not from around here, but we grew Brandywines up in Michigan, and they're a really nice, like, hearty, like, big, beefy tomato. Like a nice slicer. Beefy. We haven't used that word Beefy. You need your vocabulary. <laughs> Thanks, Cody. All right, and then um, we have the San Marzano tomato. Uh, this one's another one that's really good for um, paste and tomato sauce and stuff because it's a lot like aroma to where it's not very juicy and more fleshy. It has more meat in it yeah. than it does um, water content, I guess. Yeah. So it's a lot like aroma. It's bigger than aroma. So. Yeah, definitely. So um, I know you brought And the color is more orange. I've not experienced mine being red, red, like the aromas. They, these stay a little more on the orange side. And then our last one is Green Zebra. I just picked this one because I was like, well, you know, some people just want some colorful tomatoes. So I just picked out a green one and it looks cool. I love the stripes on it. You this one? No, okay, but I so. love any kind of green tomato. Yeah. 
So that tastes good. <laughs> Cody, Cody oh, you approves. Got, so come tell us. Tell us anything you know about it. Indeterminate. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, indeterminate. So they grow like you get more of them, so they're gonna be a little smaller. At least the variety that we grew, I believe, uh -huh. it's the same one. Mm -hmm. Um, and they get these like really awesome yellow stripes on. They look like zebras, and they're they're pretty. They're not like overly acidic, surprisingly. Ooh. Oh, they are really good. They got they're really tasty. I feel like most and I think this one's coming. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Wait, but that the last one? The green one. I think that's everything. Okay, so this video will be over. See you in a couple weeks.